Welcome back to The Breakfast, and uh, now it's time for Off the Press. It's our segment where we have a, a quick review of uh, the major newspaper uh, paper headlines across the country. Uh, this morning, we're going to be joined by Aisha Yesufu, co-convener of the Bring Back Our Girls group, uh, to, of course, share her thoughts on these stories making the headlines uh, across the country today. Uh, good morning, and thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Uh, we're kicking off with the Punch newspapers this morning uh, to see what we can uh, uh, find over there. As many of these stories, it says, of course, on the Water Resources Bill, Ohaneze, Afenifer, and others tackle the government. As uh, the federal government says, critics are ill informed. It's also on the Punch this morning. Uh, CBN prepares for recession as it reduces benchmark uh, lending rates to 11.5%. Also on the punch uh, this morning, let's build a do together. Obaseki tells Oshomale and Izeyamu. Um, Abba, or rather, Kiari, not Abba now, Kiari decries PIB delay, says uh, foreign investors losing confidence. Electricity and four price hike, NLC, TUC plan total shutdown from September 28th. Um, that's also one of the stories on the punch newspapers this morning. Um, of course, uh, still speaking about the water resources bill, uh, it says it's being opposed by those who have access to media, and that is from the minister. Uh, the 8th Senate rejected proposed law. We will kill it again, vows Abaribe. Uh, tributes as an army commander, Bako, killed by Boko Haram, is buried. It's a sad story. And uh, 10 billion naira lost, 15,000 displaced by Quara flood, says Abdul Razak. Outrage as ex-minister allegedly orders hotel female workers stripped naked. And the last one we're quickly sharing on uh, the punch this morning, Zamfara May Su Yari alleges ex-governor diverted 37 billion naira. Um, now uh, quickly to uh, Aisha Yusufu, let's have your thoughts on these stories. Uh, uh, I, I just don't know. You know, uh, it's always the pages. You always see one sad story uh, or the other. And it's really sad, uh, the death of the army commander of, of Abako. And, uh, you know, and most importantly, the way that the Nigerian government hasn't, uh, this is a hero who has fought a long war. And at the end of the day, he gave Nigeria his all. He gave his life. You would expect the federal government to do more uh, in, in honoring in honoring him. Uh, it, it's quite uh, good to see part of the things that the uh, state uh, government have put out for him and also uh, the military. But I think the federal government should do more uh, in honoring this man who lay their lives down uh, for Nigeria. It will help to motivate uh, those uh, that, that are coming, uh, that, that, are, that are there fighting for us at, at the war. Uh, front. Uh, may he so rest in peace and may God give his family uh, the fortitude to bear the loss. And I did hear, uh, I think it was also reported that his wife, when she got the news, uh, she, she she had to be hospitalized. I will wish her uh, a, a speedy uh, recovery and may God, God continue to, uh, to be with them. On the issue of uh, water resources bill, every, every time that the government is told uh, certain things that are not right with the policies they are trying to uh, uh, put forth all the bills they are trying to uh, to get passed, uh, they always come back with the fact that critics are ill-informed, critics don't know what they're doing, uh, they have access to media, that's the reason why they are doing all of that, instead of really listening. And I think it is high time that the federal government realized that they are there, their legitimacy comes from the people. And when the people are saying that they do not want something, then it is mandatory on the government to listen uh, to the to the yearnings uh, of the people. Uh, on the issue of the ex-minister that uh, got, uh, allegedly got some uh, female, some workers, both female and male, straight because of 5,000 era, he, he accused them of stealing. First of all, straight them naked and then handed them over to the police. I, I hope these workers are going to sue, sue him and they are going to claim damages. Uh, this will put an end and a stop to uh, to all of these uh, 
high-handedness that comes from people who, to, who think they can take uh, the laws uh, in, in, into, into their hands. There are quite a, a, a lot of uh, uh, headlines here. I don't know whether you want me to continue or you want us to move to uh, You can quickly uh, just people. touch on the uh, olive uh, branch that is... Uh, uh, pass from Obaseki to Zayam Wan Oshomole. Um, it's one of the stories that says, uh, let's build a do together. Obaseki tells Oshomole. Let's quickly talk on that uh, before we move on. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, the elections are over. Of course, uh, yeah, that's what is expected of him uh, to say. Uh, but there, there was another uh, headline, though we've not reached uh, the newspaper, where, uh, where he had talked about the fact that we have extra constitutional authorities like Oshomole and Tinubu. And for me, I would have really loved to talk on Go that ahead, because quickly. this is the same Go person ahead, whom Godfather Rizim brought into power. And then all of a sudden, he's in power. He realizes that Godfather Rizim is not good. And of course, that was what they were able to use to rally the people. It's always one thing. Either they will use corruption, they will use religion, they will use strife. This time it was good for that reason to have the same oath, uh, same oath. But uh, it, it's a good thing for him to to offer the olive branch uh, uh, out to everyone. And I hope at the end of the day they all put their personal sentiments aside and focus on building a uh, Edo state. Edo state isn't where it is supposed to be. We can do so much better, and it is time for our leaders to focus on growing the state rather than on growing their personalities. Thank you so much. Let's move over to the Nation newspapers uh, uh, next and see what we can also quickly find over there, as many of them as possible. Uh, petrol price, uh, electricity tariff, uh, labor sets to begin strike. Um, also, it says the federal government to meet with NLC and TUC tomorrow in continuous dialogue. Um, how water resources bill will benefit Nigerians, and that is from the federal government, as the CBN also disburses 3.5 trillion naira COVID-19 intervention cash. Still on the nation, rainstorm displaces 15,000 in Quara. Uh, MPC cuts interest rates to 11.5%. Uh, Tripa credit coming, it, it also says. And also directors to track revenue in NNPC, FIRS, Customs, um, Oyo Police and OPC lay claim to arrest of bandits. That's also on the Nation newspapers this morning. On Ondo 2020, court remands seven suspected thugs in Akure prison. Akure Dolusan threatens lawsuit against Ajayi and INEC to engage more fiscally challenged uh, people. Um, I think the last one we have here, um, uh, or your uh, National Union of Local Government Employees elects officers um, and also uh, $6 million fraud. A suspect reports himself to the EFCC. Um, these are the major stories. Uh, the nation, over to you. <laughs> well, uh, this uh, suspect uh, re uh, reports self to ESDC. That's really uh, quite uh, uh, another dimension. I would have loved to, to, to uh, read more on that to find out where, uh, how that is coming from. But, uh, uh, it, it's good that the suspect is saving the state, uh, you know, money in trying to get him and everything and then reporting. So at the end of the day, I hope if actually that $6 million uh, that he's uh, accused of uh, get returned to the people uh, whom it was taken away from. Still on the issue of the water resources bill here and uh, the federal government trying to tell the people how much it will benefit them. I think one of the things that, like I said before, that needs to happen is also for the federal government uh, to listen uh, to the yearnings of the people and not just listen to understand them and not to listen to, to, to give replies uh, to them. Uh, the big one here, petrol price, electricity tariffs, labor said to begin strike. Uh, for me, uh, I'm, I'm good with strike that labor would want, want to start, but don't just make it about petrol pricing and electricity tariff. There are so many things that are going on, bad governance, insecurity. And, you know, those are many salient issues that the, the labor should be should be taking on. On the case of a petroleum pricing, I think what would be more effective is for the government to take its hand totally off there. Let it be deregulated. Let it be, let it be full deregulation. Let there be no uh, subsidy paid on it. And so government will have no business setting the prices. The market forces will determine the prices uh, of, of petrol. And also on the issue of uh, electricity, let's have real, uh, how do I put it, 
uh, privatization of that sector because as it is today, that sector is not as privatized as it should be. And let there be electricity. And it has, we, we should be demanding that those who uh, have not been given prepaid meters should not be part of any hike. If any, any company that is not able to uh, give the consumers prepaid meter, then they, they, they have no business increasing uh, the fare because you can't be using estimated bill where you don't bring electricity and they keep uh, charging uh, the people uh, exorbitantly. Exor exor so there are so many issues uh, for me that labor uh, should be, it should be really be, be anchoring their strike on. But then, Whatever it is, at the end of the day, Nigerians need to hit the streets because right now what is going on with our government isn't uh, what you're supposed to do. Our rainstorm has been displacing a lot of, uh, 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 causing a lot of havoc all over Nigeria. Uh, Kwara is the, is the latest uh, 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 victim. And the thing comes down to the fact that what is Nigerian government doing about global warming? What is it doing about... Uh, 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 what, what do they call it now? Climate the, change. The weather that we, ha we have right now, uh, the, the fact that everything is changing. Are we looking into it? Are we focused on it? Are we making provisions on it? Because this is affecting even our livelihood. You find out what happened this year. In the south, there was no rains for months. Meanwhile, in the north, there was too much of rain that affected uh, the crops. And at the end of the day, it's going to lead to more hunger and more problems uh, in the country. So it is in the interest of Nigeria to begin to focus on climate change and also the global, the trend of the global warming and begin to take active, uh, 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 active uh, action against, uh, against all of us. Okay. Uh, quickly, I, I, I want your thoughts on the continuous dialogue. It says there that there's some continuous dialogue between the government and uh, labor. Where do you think that, you know, could possibly be headed? You know, is there, you know, a way that labor can be convinced that the strike is not really necessary? Well, I, I don't see it heading anywhere. It's just uh, uh, to be politically correct and just, just, to, just keep doing the Government says, okay, let's do something. I, that's what I call it. It's more of a lot of uh, motion, but no movement. Because at the end of the day, what labor would want is for the prices to be reduced. And uh, the government, of course, knows it, can, it can't do that. You look at, for example, the electricity uh, tariff. If you look at things, a lot of things are expensive in, in the country right now. The electricity, the production and everything, you can't just expect them not to increase uh, not to increase the prices when prices of practically everything uh, is is going up. So it's it's more or less expected. I'm a businesswoman and I see I see this thing. So at the end of the day, what 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 can be done? But uh, labor also would want a situation whereby the money that their their members are collecting go a long way because right now with the increase in, with the hike in prices, it's not going to go that long way. So of course you will see this dial dialogue. But I, I don't really see it going anywhere per se. So that's why for me I'm, I'm always saying that labor should focus more on good governance, ensuring good governance. Because if we have good governance in place, if we have security in place, most of the are uh, things that people spend their monies on, they wouldn't need to spend those monies on them. For example, if you have good quality education where children can get good quality education from primary to secondary school, Government, uh, uh, for, in government school, many people would need to pay uh, school fees in private schools, and that would be something that would be safe. If we have good uh, tra transport system, we have affordable housing that people can get. They would spend so much out there, and their money so uh, we go a long way. And I think this is where this is more sustainable. This is where government uh, labor should be putting its effort more on, rather than jumping on the street whenever there's hike in price or yeah. jumping on the street uh, to demand for increase in salaries. All right. Uh, let's now move over to the Nigerian Tribune, uh, where the federal government says uh, no going back on the water resources bill. Um, um, it's, yes, it says the federal government says no going back on water resources bill. It will never pass southern and middle belt leaders vow. Um, it also say Britain to or rather Britain rolls out new measures to combat second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, fuel and electricity price hike get ready for unprecedented mass action, uh, Labour tells Nigerians as it commences mass mobilization for nationwide protest. Don't borrow to finance development, Sanusi tells governments. And of course, um, Atiku Abubakar is also in the news. It says, I am not under U.S. surveillance. 
Um, still on the Nigerian Tribune, bulk purchase of food palliatives responsible for rising food costs. Um, fight is over, Obaseki tells Oshiomole. Um, federal government takes over revenue management of NNPC, customs, FIRS, and others. Um, what else can we find? Uh, truck drivers sue AGF and 36 governors and the FCT over roadblocks and excessive taxes and levies. CBN says economy may bounce back by December uh, 2020. And um, all your APC crisis not over. Unity Forum rejects Alawa Kala as leader. These are the major stories you can find on the uh, Nigerian uh, Tribune uh, this morning. Please go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, as no going back on what our resources bill, uh, federal government says, it's uh, I wonder why the federal government is so focused on the water resources bill when we have the electoral bill that should be we should be focusing on nigeria there's, there's need for reform electoral reform and this is a government that has the national assembly sadly under its thumb and you would think that if it was interested in passing a bill in getting bills they can send in executive bills bills that will be for the betterment of nigeria they can get it done easily because for the we have a situation whereby the national assembly even the president uh, the uh, head of the national assembly uh, the senate president had said that uh, whatever the president wants he is ready to do it for the president so why is this government not interested in having bills that will be for the betterment of nigeria being passed rather than this contro controversial abuse or, 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 or all of the time. Uh, another thing I'll look at, this truck driver through AGF, that is this government, SPT, over roadblocks, excessive taxes and levies. And I will say to you, for me, it, it's, a, it's a huge welcome development. Uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I used to run a, a college bis, uh, business from uh, Lagos to, to, to the north. I had trailers that used to move goods uh, from Lagos to the north and not uh, uh, back to Lagos. And I tell you, the levies are unbelievable, especially when you carry food. It got to a place that my company and I said to them, look, there's no need to carry food because the number of taxes you have to pay, the number of levies you have to pay uh, on the road is just unimaginable. At the end of the day, we make life difficult for, for businesses to try uh, in Nigeria, and, and it shouldn't be. And, and for me, it's a good one for them to, 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 to do this by the law and sue, and, and I, I show that uh, they, they get uh, uh, justice. Uh, don't borrow to finance development, Sunuti tells government, especially when it, it comes with the fact that these monies are being taken away. It's not the borrowing itself that is a major problem. It's the fact that the kind of project, the kind of development that they are putting them towards, we are not seeing it. If it's something that at the end of the day is going to, to bring in yields into the country, you will say, okay, welcome the development. But what we have mostly is the fact that these monies are borrowed, these monies are taken are away, looted by people. <clears throat> You do not see the development on ground, and it becomes uh, a major, a uh, huge problem. About purchase of food palettes responsible for rising food costs, I don't think that is so. I don't know where the Food Security Council uh, got that. Yes, they bought a uh, purchase of, of food, but there are so many factors that have led uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, rising costs of food. Let's not forget the fact that Nigeria is an import-based uh, 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 country. We, we import so much. And any time that the dollar is affected, it affects everything in Nigeria, up to the cost of Gary. I see a lot of people sometimes say that, oh, what, what is Gary's business with the rising cost of dollar? I'm like, everything, we were so import-dependent that things go up. And the moment things go up, every other thing has to find their way uh, in going up also. And the most important thing we are not looking at is the fact that there is no uh, security in Nigeria. Insecurity has driven a lot of people out of the farms. We are facing food crisis. Uh, our food security has been, for years now, has been, uh, has been affected a lot. But it's just that we've not been focused on that. The farmers that have been driven away from farms that are no longer farming, that bandits, terrorists, and all of that kidnappers are taking them away. They're going to cause a problem. And when there is a reduction 
are in the productivity, of course, there's going to be scarcity. And when there's scarcity, the prices are going to go up. And these prices are going to, the prices are going to go much higher because right now we have, apart from insecurity, we now have natural disaster uh, are causing uh, the farms uh, produce not to do very well this year. So there's so much problem uh, that we have ahead of us. Sadly, our government even trying to be on top of this problem. They are trying to wish those things away by actually doing nothing. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to go to the uh, Guardian now. I want to see what we can quickly find on the Guardian uh, newspapers this morning and um, hopefully also the business day if we have time for it. Uh, the Guardian says a rise in food prices in the north send scary signal. It says a tougher days ahead unless government tackles insecurity, says Shatima. Uh, Teriba blames COVID-19 for hunger crisis and of course food inflation triggered by headsmen's killings, says a farmer's a leader. Also on The Guardian this morning, labor and civil society groups reaffirm Monday strike. NLC decries a scheduled meeting with government as a, a, the TUC justifies reasons for the strike. Uh, one or two others, CBN cuts lending rate, uh, retains others. And also teachers seek upward review of retirement age. That's also on The Guardian newspapers this morning. Um, I'm going to quickly also throw in the, the business day and see what we can also uh, add in here. Nigeria uh, states cannot deliver uh, development now, says Sanusi. Interest rate caught to 11.5% means more liquidity for banks as the savings rate drop. Um, a federal government looks inward to upward a dwindling, upturn rather, dwindling revenue. And also have stocks gained from Nigeria's financial repression. That's uh, one of the stories on the uh, Business Day uh, newspapers this morning. Um, over to you, uh, Aisha Yusufu. Uh, okay, so uh, let me just quickly start with that Business Day, with this one where federal government looks inward to obtain really revenues. I hope they are looking inward. It's not just to focus on taxing and taxing and taxing the people to death uh, because th th that, that's not sustainable. One of the things that the federal government should look at is to reduce the cost of governance. We need to, uh, to, 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 to really reduce the cost of governance. There's excessive spending over there. There are many um, uh, uh, parastatas that have no business being there on their own. Like the PP, is it PPPRA, the one that, is, that, that fixed uh, pricing? What, what business does that have being an organization uh, on its own? It is time for the government to really look, bring out the Oroso Yes report and begin to look at the ways that they can uh, implement uh, all of that. Okay, the issue of Sanus, I think we've already uh, at, at talked about that, yeah. have stocks gained from Nigeria's uh, financial uh, repression with the outbreak of uh, COVID-19. Of course, we are on a trajectory. There was, according to the financial uh, reports, there was a bit of rise uh, due to uh, some of the things that had been uh, put in place, especially with the uh, reduction of, uh, what do you call it, uh, interest rate. Uh, and of course, uh, And over uh, the COVID-19 absolutely has turned a lot of things uh, ups upside down. But we do hope that uh, as a nation, we're able to get ourselves together and, and back on, on, track, on track again. Our interest rate cut to 11.5% means more liquidity for bank savings rate drop. And of course, most times people will look for uh, other places uh, to, to actually put their investment. Can you remind me again the last newspaper we had checked before uh, this? The, the Guardian and the Business Day. Okay, yes, the Guardian. So let me go back uh, to, the, to the Guardian right now. And I think, uh, no, I'm missing this Guardian. Let me, I, I think I, I got... The, the Guardian stories say rising food prices in the north. Okay, yeah, I have scary. now. Thank yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would take to gather for the others. So, of course, uh, on the issue of the food prices, I, I think uh, it's some of the things that I did mention, you know, about security, not just COVID-19, are uh, leading to the uh, food, uh, increase in, in the cost of food uh, prices. And I think that's part of the things uh, that, that we see here. Security is playing a major part because... A lot of farmers have been driven away from their farms. And we're going to see a worse uh, in that. Rising food prices in North sense scary signal. I'm telling you, if, if, if our government is very sensible, 
they should look into this because one of the things we need to understand, I am a child of Nigeria. I was born and brought up in the, in the north, but I'm, I'm from the south, south. So I can say I have, a, I know the pulse of a bit of both sides of, of Nigeria. The northern, the average northern person is not afraid of death. And the day that he gets angry, you might look at him and say he's docile, he doesn't mind, he takes everything in his stride, everything that happens, this is the bad. The day he gets angry, he will, and you push him to the wall, he will say whatever it is and come out. And if they are not careful, that revolution that they are afraid of would actually come out uh, from the northern part of the country. And with the food, where you have, when people are hungry, it will, it will lead to that uh, coming uh, out sooner rather than later. So it is in the, uh, in the interest of the federal government to really focus uh, uh, on, on what to do about this uh, crisis that it's really uh, looming. Teachers seek upward review of retirement age. Well, on, on a normal day, you find most, most people want to retire early. In other countries, you find that they are fighting. They want the retirement age to be reduced. But of course, yeah, people want to be in office, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in work longer because of the kind of economy uh, that we have. I would have said, yeah, because t teaching is something that you need that knowledge. Uh, older people get, yeah, they can pass a whole lot of that knowledge. on, But then, what kind of quality of teachers do we have in the first place? Are they the ones that we want to keep retaining? I would say no, because the teachers that we have, the kind of teachers we have today, they are not the teachers for the 21st century. They're the teachers of the industrial age where it was all about learn. It is about what you know, not today, where it is about how fast you can learn or learn, we learn uh, again. So uh, for me personally, I don't think there's any need uh, to review uh, uh, upward. The, the retirement age. Our labor right. civil society groups will have a monthly strike. We look forward to that. As long as it's for the good betterment of Nigeria, we are always right. open That's all uh, the... for, 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 for boots on the streets. That's all the time we have. Aisha Yusuf is always, always, on, always interested in speaking with you and uh, sharing your views on these uh, stories. Looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And that's all the time we have for Off the Press. Um, stay with us. We'll be back after this very short break.